this is the Investor Connect podcast program. I'm Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, family offices, private equity, and many other investors for early stage and growth companies. I hope you enjoy this episode. Investor Connect is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors and startups for fundraising. Please consider donating $100 to the program to help others in their investor and entrepreneur journey. You can find the donate button on the InvestorConnect.org website. Well, hello, this is Hall Martin with Investor Connect. Today we're here with Zachary Sherman, Director of Strategy and Business Development at Cielo24. Cielo24 has blended the best of human intelligence with AI technology to create caption, transcription, and intelligence data at scale to make video and audio accessible, searchable, and more engaging. Zachary, thank you for joining us. Hey, Hal. Thanks for having me. Great. So tell us more about your background before getting involved in early stage companies. Sure. So my background, uh, I'll start back in 2014 uh, after finishing my undergrad at Rutgers University, uh, where I studied finance and economics. Uh, My first job out of school was as a research analyst at a special situations and distressed debt hedge fund based in Princeton, New Jersey. There, I learned from the ground up how to analyze companies and securities from a variety of different perspectives in order to perform valuation and synthesize in my investment thesis. The fund was very generalist in nature, so I was exposed to nearly every company size and industry type from retail to renewable energy, real estate, aerospace. But I found that my favorite was covering the semiconductors and especially the technology companies, which I thought were very misunderstood from a valuations perspective. After sitting behind six Bloomberg screens every day for three years and passing my CFA exams, I decided to leave the hedge fund world, take a step back, do some solo traveling, and I ended up in Israel on the last leg of my trip. And as you probably know, the startup and VC scene in Israel is booming. Um, So through cold calling and emailing, I was actually able to get in front of five VC firms and through those conversations landed a role as an associate at Pereg Ventures in their New York office. So uh, I can talk a little bit more about Pereg um, and kind of how I got to where I am now. Sure. So Pereg Ventures focuses on early stage B2B SaaS uh, with an emphasis on data solutions, uh, disrupting consumer driven industries. So think retail tech, media tech, uh, logistics, digital health, and other applications of AI machine learning and, and big data. Um, During my time at Pareg, I spent four years there. Um, I helped deploy nearly a third of the fund's total capital across more than 20 transactions, screened and met with several hundreds of early stage companies from Series C to Series C, um, and was a board observer on five of Pareg's portfolio companies as well, where I worked really closely with the management teams and the board of directors on strategic decision making. Um, So come present day, I actually recently moved into an executive position leading strategy and business development at one of those tech companies that I was a board observer for, uh, which is Cielo24. Great. So what excites you right now? So right now, given that I've moved to the startup world, um, to the Cielo24 world, uh, my focus has shifted Um, on a very interesting subsector within tech, focusing on ASR, automatic speech speech recognition, speech to text, um, and video intelligence and accessibility. Uh, With the massive acceleration of the digital transformation that I'm sure you've witnessed uh, due to the the pandemic, uh, among global, private, and public organizations, the amount of video content being produced and consumed is growing massively within enterprise, marketing, broadcast and digital media, education, and even within government sectors as well. Uh, A few statistics that I like, uh, Cisco estimates that video streaming is set to be as much as 82% of total web traffic by 2022. Um, Another stat that I also like is uh, viewers retain 95% of a message presented to them in a video compared to 10% when just reading text alone. So with the deployment of 5G and other infrastructure around enabling better video consumption, we're in an exciting time for those startups who are able to enhance the overall video experience for either the publisher or the consumer. 
Um, and it represents you know, a massive global opportunity with NVIDIA search, whether it's keyword, adword, topics or categories, video accessibility, uh, recommendations, brand safety, sentiment bias, uh, et cetera. Well, great. Well, you've seen a lot of startups and a lot of investors out there. What's your advice for people investing in startups? What do you tell them to do before they write that check? So my advice for people investing startups, um, either you know within my sector or other adjacent tech sectors, um, could probably be summed up in a couple points. First, I like to look for startups who are solving practical problems that provide clear value to the target customer in an obtainable market that you can measure realistically. Um, in order for you as the investor to really be able to actually do this, you really need to talk to many, many startups within the space to really build out your awareness of what's out there um, and your awareness of both how the problem is being perceived and how they're thinking about other potential alternative solutions. It's rare that I, I or other investors that I speak with find a company that's truly doing everything unique, even though we too often hear founders tell us that they have no real competitors, which is a big no-no on their part. Um, so I'd say the first point, the first uh, tip I would give is to talk to as many startups as you can and do your research so you're able to identify opportunities that fit that basic criteria. Second, once you believe you found that company that fits the criteria of you know, large obtainable market and you know, solving a problem uh, with clear value to the customer and it gets you excited, you need to ask yourself if the founders and the management team is capable of following through on their vision and scaling the company to reach critical mass. So typically founders with a history of prior startup exits and deep industry knowledge uh, and networks uh, and uh, are able to exhibit professionalism and believability in their storytelling generally have more success in their own business execution, as well as gaining investor trust, uh, which will help them raise additional funds down the road. Great. And then on the other side of that table, what's your advice for people running startups? What do you tell the founder to do before they go out to raise funding? For people running startups, I think a lot of what I said that applies to the investor also applies reciprocally to, to them. I mean, make sure that you know the ins and the outs of your own business, uh, your roadmap, your customers, your competition, your potential acquirers. Um, and just as importantly, be able to clearly communicate it through your conversations through your investor materials, your marketing materials, and other content, other content that you put out, uh, and through your storytelling as well. Great. So let's talk about the state of startup investing. How do you see the industry evolving from here? So there are some key themes that uh, I think everyone should be aware of. Uh, first, there is more capital being allocated globally to startup investments than uh, ever before. So not only from money flowing from traditional VCs, uh, but now you see non-traditional investors making direct investments in startups, like corporations, either on the balance sheet or through a corporate VC, hedge funds, sovereign wealth funds, and even more traditional private equity have moved into earlier stage companies. Not only is there more capital, round sizes at every stage are significantly increasing in size. As there is a trend of investors making larger initial bets, and in turn, giving companies more runway, allowing them to stay private for longer. Um, and because of round sizes getting larger, valuations are also getting larger, even more so than what we've seen uh, recently in, in the public markets as well. So that uh, trend of larger rounds, um, increased valuations, staying private for longer, um, these are some of the main trends that I've seen uh, in the industry at, at the moment. Great. And what do you think is the biggest change we'll see in, say, the next 12 to 24 months? In the next 12 to 24 months? Well, I would say the biggest change I see right now is the increased disparity between actual traction that the company has and the valuations that they're receiving. And by this, I mean that there are significantly more pre-revenue or very little revenue companies today raising tens of millions of dollars from investors that five years ago, probably they wouldn't even bother taking a look at. Um, so in my opinion, the appetite for risk by investors in tech has increased dramatically. And uh, I, I mean, as they're hunting for those 10X to 100X returns seen by many of the earlier investors in those unicorns that we see have emerged today. I mean, and, and the, lingering, the lingering question among investors you know, today is, is this sustainable? 
when will this favorable M&A and IPO environment dry up? What will happen if this unprecedented bull market environment flips and we transition into a downturn? Um, but for now, from what I see, investor FOMO mentality is overcoming those fears. But over the next you know, 12 months, you, know, we, you, never, you never know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's go back to your investment thesis at Perig. What exactly is the thesis and what's your criteria for investing in a startup? My investment thesis, I guess, around Cielo24 and just the video space in general is that there is and will continue to be for the next many years an increased focus on unlocking the value of video assets um, and adoption of solutions that that enable it for almost every organization, big or small. So right now, the market is very fragmented with very disparate solutions, both both legacy and emerging, focusing on video management or distribution and hosting, uh, measuring video, making video accessible, and the overall video experience. Um, So right now, as these players look for scale, the partnership model is very prevalent. I see a lot of them working together um, through partnerships, but I think consolidation is eventually inevitable. Um, If the fundraising environment continues to be as favorable for startups as it is right now, um, you know, and they are able to continue raising capital. I think they'll be fine continuing this partnership model, but eventually when that capital dries up, I think there's going to be a lot more consolidation as, um, you know, resources become scarce. Great. Can you talk about one or two portfolio startups that may fit that thesis? Uh, well, you know, I'd definitely like to talk about, you know, my current company, Cielo. Um, you know, what we do really well is give our customers an insane amount of customizability when it comes to integrations. We have large universities from all over the world who all use different OVPs and content management systems, using us to provide compliance and professional quality video captions and foreign subtitles of highly technical video content um, in a streamlined, user-friendly way. And we're seeing an explosion of demand from customers with archives of video content looking for our caption and transcription and data data tagging capabilities. I would also add that another trend I've I've been seeing more and more lately is organizations looking to expand their audience to different international markets. Through the increased digital transformation and everything migrated to the cloud, it's becoming easier for organizations to justify enabling foreign language and foreign subtitles to their video and marketing content so that they can access these other large groups of customers that they weren't able to reach before. That's something that Cielo specializes in doing at scale that not, that no one else is really doing well right now. Cool. So let's talk about challenges in the marketplace today. What do you see as the challenge startup space in launching their business? The biggest challenge that I've seen recently and that I see among almost every one of these startups is finding affordable talent and leadership on the engineering and data science side. It's really hard for most early, mid, and even some of these late stage startups too, to compete with like the Amazons and the Googles and the Facebooks of the world who are offering, from what I hear, sometimes million dollar comp packages to, you know, engineering heads and and individual data scientists. And yeah, it's a real problem that almost every startup I talk to is experiencing. Uh, I think one of the best ways that, you know, my company and a lot of others have tried to you know battle this is looking internationally for talent and there are there are so many smart people um, in you know Waterloo Canada looking uh, you know when you're thinking about data scientists um, and even Brazil there's you know a lot of tech uh, you know smart tech people out there as well um, and there there's so much internationally that I think uh, that's where startups are are, uh, are looking to combat these increasing and rising costs of of engineering and data science talent. And then what's the challenge the investor faces in today's marketplace? Uh, a problem I've heard among a few VCs, um, I mean, more than just a few, um, is finding the highest quality deals. I mean, if you're a Lightspeed or Sequoia or Andreessen or Greycroft um, or any of the other top tier VCs, you don't really have this problem. But some of the mid-tier or lesser known VCs work very hard and aggressively to get on the de- get in on the deals that those top tier VCs are involved in. And I think it sort of makes sense, you know, as those top tier VCs have, you know, huge potential strategic value for the startups through their deep network and platform of prior uh, investment successes. 
Um, whereas a lot of those other, you know, mid-tier, lower VCs don't bring as much to the table from that strategic standpoint and are more just financial backers. Right. Well, you, do, you see a lot of sectors and applications out there in today's marketplace. If you had to pick one or two that you think are really good opportunities for investors to pursue at this time, what would you call out? There are so, so, so many. So this is a hard question for uh, me. But um, you know, the most interesting companies I find are doing something really uh, interesting or unique with data. The amount of data being produced and captured online, in store, at home, on devices, in the warehouses, on the roads, at the airports, there's just so much that can be measured and captured that isn't right now that um, you know, and also by applying AI and machine learning, new insights and intelligence off that data is created. You know, processes are improved to reduce cost. Productivity gains are created, um, and there's also a huge increased social impact possibilities as well. There's just so many startups that fit in along that data supply chain that have enormous potential to either take existing market share from le- legacy, less innovative players. Or either, or rather, create completely new submarkets themselves. Great. Well, in the last few minutes that we have here, what else should we cover that we haven't? Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything that I'd like to cover. <laughs> Great. Sound like you did as well. Appreciate the uh, feedback. And uh, so, how best for listeners to get back in touch with you? You should be able to find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty good at responding to messages there, but you can also email me as well at zachary.sherman at clo24.com. Z-A-C-A-R-Y. There's no H in my first name. <laughs> Great. Well, we'll put that in the show notes. I want to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you back for a follow-up soon. Thanks, Al. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at InvestorConnect.org. Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.